because that's how I have to shut that off. Explain that later in another review. Um, so, I made a promise to you all that I wouldn't do another like $3,000 DAC. So this is a $3,000 DAC, but it squeaked through that with like fucking, I'm sure somebody wrote it down in the lawyer hood. It was like, no, 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 wait, wait. What if it's not just a DAC? What if it's a streamer? Then Zeos can still review it. And also it's made by Matrix Audio and I love Matrix Audio. So I was like, all right, Apos, fucking send it. Um, that being said, three gemstones in the title because $3,000. Now, take these off, which are worth more than that. It's not just a DAC. I've already established that. It's a streamer. And uh, Matrix, I had that big unit, um, the Element X, and I loved it. And they eventually took that back. And I was like, oh, but now the little baby one over there waiting to be reviewed. We'll get to that. And that unit was a DAC and a headphone amp and a streamer. But it was not a streamer in the sense that this is. This is better. This is their newest thing. This is the Sabre 3. Um, not to be confused with just the standard. Here, hold on. I have, I have the entire user manual and I've got... So here's the Sabre X. There's the... I'm sorry. Matrix X-Sabre Pro MQA DAC, which looks identical to this except for the way the things in the back look. And if you didn't know, you wouldn't know that this is the Matrix X-Saber 3 DAC and an extra, how much How much money's $700 more? So this one's, the, the, the lesser older one is $2,300 and the new one, this one is $3,000. You have the option of black or silver. I didn't actually see it came in a silver option. Why do I always get the black ones? I want, I want silver. I have to take out the trash. Um, and the upgrades kind of threw me for a bit because I'm used to the Element X and I have to use that stupid MA remote app. So I, for the, like the longest fucking time, I'm sitting here trying to get the MA remote app to work with it. And then I start actually like reading in depth about the unit because I kind of want to just, my, my review process is get a thing, learn nothing about it and just use it. And then when I get stuck, and it's annoying, then I start reading into the manuals and very rarely other people's reviews. I don't like reading other people's reviews. But um, I started reading into this and it's like, oh, oh, they've, oh, 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 DLNA is built in. So I literally, if we put on, that was Man of Steel, by the way, this is Madness, which was the best part of every Man of Steel thing is that, um, what's his name? Did the, Hans Zimmer did the soundtrack. You know, he won't do any more, um, superhero soundtracks because of shit like Man of Steel and how poorly written it was. And he put all this effort into it and everyone's like, this movie sucks. And Hans Zimmer's like, I am done with you. I'm going back to my studio, which is amazing. Have you ever seen Hans Zimmer's studio? All right. So if I put on, let's say, whatever who this is, Mariana Lepores, if vocals, pick up the Meze Empyrean Elites which are coming out of the IFI Pro ICANN signature. So 3,000, 2,300, and these are $4,000 headphones. So this should be the end all of anyone's fucking, this should be it, this should be it. Um, I just picked, I've had the signature out for a while. I know how it sounds, I know how it handles things. So I'm using, cause you have to assess the DAC bits of this, right? I'm gonna get to the features, don't worry. Zeos, timestamp, we'll get to the features. I don't know what I'm timestamping, but right now I'm going to tell you how it sounds because that's really super easy. It sounds great. It fucking better. That That's like kind of my, that's my stance on a lot of audio equipment. If you're going to charge this sort of money, I better not have a complaint about how it sounds. I'm going to complain about other things. Those are why you come to Z reviews. Zeos just puts a checkbox. Does it sound good? Yes. Get that shit out of the way. Quirks and features. I did it first, Doug. I did it first, Doug. Um, so I picked two amplifiers. I hooked up my world's best cable, including the eminence ones that lock, which are kind of like, I don't know. 
why, but these have like screw on eminence connectors, so I can't accidentally pull it out. And I've got the RCA is going to the Rebel Amp, which is the class A uh, Ukraine made son of a bitch, which is currently hooked up to the uh, Great O'Hemps. And I've got the ICANN signature hooked up to the Elites. And I'm just assessing sound quality. And I have absolutely no problem with the way it sounds at all on anything. This is doing its job. Sound quality is now finished. Like, it, I don't think it adds layers of, of depth. It's just, it's, 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 I like the way Matrix Audio sounds. Like their, their, their cheaper units were like, wow, this sounds fucking good. That was usually with their amplification built in. So when you strip away the amplification, then all you're left with is the DAC, and then you have to add your own amplification. And I know how the Rebel Amp sounds. I know why I like it. And people have been asking where that is. It's literally been sitting on a, actually it was sitting on the shelf. Pull this out. I know how this sounds. I know how I like it sounding. I know how this sounds. I know how I like it sounding. So if this can just make that happen, I'm good. Now, moving on away from sound quality, you're done. If that's what you came here for, absolutely, $3,000, perfectly fine. You wanna spend less money, spend $1,000 on another Matrix device, it'll probably sound as good coming out the back. What you're paying for with this is unfortunately MQA, which don't let that hasten, I just, I just ignore that, I'm gonna mention it. There's no logos anywhere, which is like five fucking bullet points of like, there's no logo, there's no MQA logo. We don't say MQA anywhere on the unit. You don't are embarrassed by that. So that's good. But it does all the fucking crazy folding shit that they claim is gonna make it sound as true. It was some, I read the, the blurb and I wanted to puke. It was like, as the artist intend in the studio. I'm like, but it's lossy. Um, Unfold, I'm gonna unfold my finger, MQA. Oh God, that's a good one. I look, I don't wanna, I don't wanna shit it, I burn any bridges harder than I have. They're already on fire. I'm just pouring liquid nitrogen and gasoline and napalm on it. Sounds good. Let's talk about features. Let's talk about build quality first. Cause if you go to the unboxing of this, which there is an unboxing channel. And really, if you wanna know my first impression on something, like I unboxed these yesterday. And I'm like, huh, I like have a spiritual moment because I've always dreamed of Meze, of like owning Meze Empyreans. And then Antonio Meze is like emailing me and he's like, hey, we're going to send you these. Oh, by the way, thank you for you know, supporting us over the years. And I'm like, what? Okay. Um, so I had like a moment, like, I'm like these are, these are my Meze Empyrean elites. And they're obviously great for marketing because they're going to end up on a wall maybe, and then just always be there. But this thing, this thing has to earn my respect. And when I unbox this thing, I'm like, all right, I know it's an expensive DAC. All right, it's got streaming capabilities. We'll t talk about what that actually means in a bit. But I pulled this fucker out of the box and it has the most high-end feel of any unit, sans those, that I've ever touched in audio. And it's just a DAC, so that's like, like there's not a lot of complicated like knobs and like an amplifier with the with the fins for the heat dispersion. So I just pulled this out of its like crate. I should think it was just foam, and I picked it up. And that's the first thing you notice is this fucking thing weighs like 11 pounds, which is heavy as hell. And then you like look at it, and it's got three feet, little little thin. Uh, pyramid cones with rubberized bottoms and you've got the 110 220 switch which i think was wrong always check that it says in the manual i'm bright i can't leave it standing up because it's so thin if this falls over it's going to make a clunk and break my hand so the bottom is basic with just that switch with nice things and you look at like the edging and how they they've just machined this is all one solid block of aluminum or hardened steel it feels like hardened steel it doesn't feel like aluminum then the fascia is just a nice shape and you got this long thin glass here and the top is all glass it's just here I'm gonna give me double waifus for a second it's like i, I was cons considering it i didn't do it because i don't know how youtube would react to it but i was considering getting like pixie sticks and putting a pixie stick down on top of this glass 
and then you wouldn't be able to tell if I was sucking it through my mouth or putting out my nose. I would be like <laughs> out off the top of it because that would have been fucking hilarious. I didn't do it, but me describing me doing it is second best thing. Because I would, this is, um, oh, I, gotta, I think I might have spit on it. A lot of this, a lot of don't fucking touch me. This exudes don't fucking touch me. And then when you actually go to touch it and you pick it up, Oh, did I unplug it? That will definitely be a problem. There's a little power indicator there. We press it, and an OLED screen pops on. A full color OLED screen in a circle automatically got my attention now. It says Matrix Audio, it's currently booting because this has to boot. Boot. Yeah, see, it's got a little loading bar in blue. Oh, this thing is so fucking heavy to hold up. I'm just, I'm just gonna give it a second. Which that means it probably broke the connection. All right, no network. Please find the network. Come on, because this is connected to my Wi-Fi, but not through the app, not through the MA Remote app, which makes it easy. I thought see, the MA Remote app you could literally send its own little. Um, oh, it's, it's working now. Double checking by hitting play and turning this up. There we go. Okay. So, what you get with this is the most futuristic, best built unit in audio that I've touched. And I've touched cord stuff, and, it, and cord stuff looks like it's trying to be like Flash Gordon, and then they got screens, but this is subtle. This just, if this isn't, if a cord product is sitting on someone's desk, you're like, what the fuck is that? And this, if it's sitting on your desk, you're like, what is that? If it's off, if it's, if it's got everything turned off, it's just a glass shiny motherfucker. And then you turn on the screen, which where, get the remote. You turn on all the stuff, which I've had it now set to not auto dark and everything. And you get all your controls or touch controls on this strip of glass. You get power, which you have to hold for two seconds. In fact, if you hit it, it says tap and hold for two seconds after standby. One of the negatives I will say about that is you can hold off. If, if I tap and hold this, I can keep holding it and keep holding it and it never goes off. Oh, there it goes. It, like you don't have to hold it until it does that. You could do it and let go. If like you go three or four seconds, it just, it's like, are you, you gonna keep holding me? So like, I wish it just shut off faster. Then you have the moon button, which is there, which shuts everything off, which is also on the remote. We gotta talk about the remote and how I wish to fucking Christ. There we go. I wish to Christ the remote had more buttons. As much as I love that remote, everyone knows how I love the Matrix remote. That needs more buttons. You then have input. So we've got streaming. We hit input and then you can pick through. Uh, can you actually switch through this? No, you just set input and then you have left and right arrows to let you do everything. Back, streaming, USB audio, I2S, optical, and coaxial. Those are your choices. So optical, coaxial, we know. I2S, I'll talk about. USB and streaming. We're currently streaming because we're doing DLNA. Um, explain what that is in a second. Let me get, oh, go away. Yeah, okay. You have mute. You have, when there's nothing else being done, this is volume, up and down. I actually have it down five decibels because this thing was getting a little rowdy with those speakers. My, my wrist is literally going to fail. Holy shit. Um, this side you have what looks to be like a little uh, mixer up and down and that changes filters, either DSD or PCM filters. So you have the standard fast roll-offs, minimum slow roll-off, linear, brick wall, use that to enter. And then you can go to the DSD filter and you can change DSD filters through from auto to 70 hertz, 50, I have no idea, I don't use enough DSD to start playing around with filters in that. And then you have the S circle, which is asynchronous, synchronous, or back. And that has to do with, put this down for a second. That has to do with using the clock oscillators that's an extra versus the one built into the decoding chip it's just, the sound is slightly different. And I'm not gonna say if I like one more, don't like one more. I've had 
um, synchronous, asynchronous, actually on the unit I had taken down, the um, the Art Aquila 2 had a, a choice, synchronous or asynchronous, where it would bypass like an extra step and go back to like raw DAC versus the reclocking, and you could actually kinda hear something different. So that gives you this. And then following this up, lastly, is the gear for settings. Now there are 16 pages of settings on this, and it's actually not as thick as you think. The last one is firmware update, which when I was connected to my network, which we'll get to, um, that fucking process, I literally hit that and it's like, hold on, I'm checking, and it just checks the internet. And I went, yes, there is. And I went, okay, do it. It downloaded it. I said, okay, install it. It restarted and it's got the newest firmware. That is the no app required. In fact, there isn't an app for this. And I'm usually like, don't like apps, but then if you're gonna give me a $3,000 DAC that's a streamer, you better give me an app. But now it's like, no, 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 no. Simplification. And I'm okay with this to a point, but we'll get to some shit. So literally you can update the firmware just once you're connected to your network, hit go. This also can take a, um, That's fine. Everything's fine. This also can take a network cable. I should probably show you the back. Power plug. Uh, Zeos, timestamps. Remember to write timestamps down. When I rewatch these to get links, the timestamp thing is new, and I don't remember. I have to remind myself. Power plug. Normal power plug. I didn't put anything stupid on it. You have triggers in and out, 12-volt triggers. So, like, I had to unplug the speakers. If I had the trigger set up, I could have it so those would just not be on. If the trigger does If you don't know what triggers are, it's basically a 12-volt signal that other high-end or commercial units have 12 volt triggers in and out. I set up a projector once that had a trigger. And when you turned on the receiver, the receiver turned on a power plug and the plug sent 12 volt to the projector and the projector turned on. It just triggers things to happen in order. So they have in and out. So it'll, it'll, you could trigger this to turn on or you could trigger something else to turn on or off via that. You get your network cable here, which I don't have hooked up because I'd have to build a network cable and run it over there because the only one over here is for the laptop. So I'm using it Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi antenna is located somewhere inside of the top glass. Probably the reason why the top is glass is it has the dual 2.4 and 5G connections for the smoothest streaming possible. So they just fucking glass the whole top. Here's your USB connector. Here's your coaxial connector. Here's your optical connector. Here's your II2S. Here's your XLRs and here's your RCAs. That's it, done. By the way, I'm linking these. Can, can I unscrew this one? Hold on. Did I, I, didn't, I didn't do the thing where this literally locks. You screw it up and it squeezes that so it doesn't, it never falls off. Like why? Why eminence? <sighs> but there you go. That's, it's not a complicated plug is on the back. The only thing kind of interesting is a trigger, but I expect that for this sort of price range. And the, the Cat5 connection, or the RJ45 connection, whatever you wanna be. Just keep wiping it, just keep fucking wiping it. So, back to the settings, because that's where the fun shit's about to happen. Ugh. I really should have brought a stand over here. Like a fucking, like an engine hoist. I have that electric hoist and brrr, lift it up to the ceiling. So settings again, I'm going backwards. 16 is firmware update, 15 is load defaults, 14 is product info. This is your enter. It is the uh, X Saber 3, serial number blah, network name blah, connected to my thing. It's uh, It tells you it's Wi-Fi IP on my network is .1.56. There's the MAC address. There's the hardware build and the software build, which got updated and then there's back. So that's it. Um, network Wi-Fi. So, I'm gonna go into this. Uh, it's it's it literally gives you it shows you LAN or Wi-Fi, and I'm not I, I'm not gonna go into it because I was gonna do this review yesterday, but I was so pissed and like my fingers hurt and I was I was like no because. Unlike the previous Matrix stuff that had the app that you can connect to its Wi-Fi and then tell it your Wi-Fi password or then it would connect out and then you... This, and I, I've checked because I have the fucking manual open right here. Here's the manual loading up beautifully. It's like, oh yeah, you want to connect it to your network Wi-Fi. Pick your network, type in your Wi-Fi password. Now... Picking the network, honestly, was pretty easy, except for the fact that it doesn't show the entire length, and I have a long network name. I have my my old town 
uh, correctional. Because this way, if anyone sees the Wi-Fi, no one wants to connect to any prison Wi-Fi. So they just I just put the word correctional or rehab. Like, that's good things. Or IRS, IRS database. Don't No one will fucking touch a Wi-Fi connection that has the words, the number, the letters IRS in them. No one will touch it. Um, but the thing is, I have two of them. I have uh, correctional and correctional IoT. The IoT network is the slower network that's designed for all my, like, light switches and shit. I didn't want it to connect to that. But it didn't tell me which one was which, because it only showed me the first, like, seven or eight characters. And I'm like, why? So I picked one. And then it proceeded to make me type in the password on the unit that only has a left and right arrow. Um, I'd love to show you, but th this is the bane of this unit's existence. The bane is the network. And you only have to do it once, and you have to get it right once. But my word, let me just tell you about my experience. So I pick one. I'm not sure if it's the IoT or not. And then it's like, all right, type in the password. And you get lowercase letters, and you have to go through all 26 left and right. Luckily, it will wrap around so you can go over it, and then you have to hit enter. And then they're lowercase, and they're small. This is not exactly the largest screen on Earth. So they don't make the letters big to let you see what you're picking. So the letter, the lowercase i and the lowercase j both have the dot above them, and they're both the slight. So I ended up typing that wrong. And there's no, like, cursor to get the thing back to erase that i, that, that j that you put in by mistake and change it to an i. You have to back up the whole fucking thing. So I must have had this unit but da, 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 500 times yesterday. I'm surprised it didn't wear out the screen. Because I have a very long, complicated password, because that's how you secure your network, is you make it just a, a sentence. Zeos loves eating hot dogs on Sunday. That's my Wi-Fi password. It actually isn't, but that is impossible for a fucking computer to guess, and you'll remember it every time. Zeos loves eating hot dogs on Sunday. It's a lot of typing on a phone, but you only got to do it once. But when you're not typing on a phone with a keyboard and you're typing, it's like putting in, it reminds me of the arcade. And when you win a game and you had the three letters, remember the three letters you had to put in for your name and all you had was left and right control? And you're like, my name is Steve. So S T E. Because that's all you could put in is Steve. How many times did you say A A A? Because three was too many times. I've got like 22 characters in my fucking Wi-Fi password. Sorry about harking on this. Matrix, it sounds beautiful. It's a beautiful unit. But holy fuck. I, I was hoping I could just like touch. It's not a touch screen. It was a touch screen and I could just scroll it. Like throw it and then be like S, M, N, N. Like that would have been fine. But it was literally... Mm, enter and here's the biggest shit the first one i connected to was the iot network and i knew because i had to go to my network and check to see which one i was connected to so i'm like oh fuck so okay okay i'll go connect to the other one i'll put the whole password in again because i was trying to get the remote app to work which doesn't work with this unit because again i didn't read because i'm not a reader and then i had to put it in again for the other one and then i wanted to just check to see if maybe i put my phone so i went back to try the other one again and I got out of the, I went from the IoT to the correct one. Then the correct one back to the IoT to try that again with something I wanted to test. And it's like, what's your password? I'm like, I pied my password for this one. And then I went, oh God, it forgot, it forgets your password. As soon as you change to another network, it doesn't remember your password. If you leave it on one network, it's fine. But I went from wrong one to right one. And then I went, wait, let me try and do the wrong one again and try this thing. Put in your password. I went, no, no. Oh, fuck! I had to do the whole thing a third time. I got really good at it, too. I was just like... So that's just... You'll be fine. Luckily, all my, my password had no special characters or uppercase because it's so fucking long, it doesn't need them. Spoiler alerts to my fucking Wi-Fi password. But if I had to, like, switch the menu and then scroll through multiple upper and lowercase, I wouldn't do this review. This unit would just be broken on the floor. But I got it working, and then I start reading up on the thing, and I realize, oh, there's no app. Because they're, they're right. Matrix, while they can build a competent app, can't build a great app. And no one wants to load the Matrix app. People want to load Spotify and Tidal and Rune and fucking FUBAR. And these apps talk directly to this because it shows up on your network as a device. When the DL DLNA is on and I have the U UPnP plugins for this, 
my Pi Hat, which is this unit, this foobar sees this unit sitting on the network and then goes, do you want me to play on this? And then it does. And my whole, everything here is all fed off of this. If you haven't seen my review of the Pi 2A, the Pi 2 AES, look it up because it's a wonderful little unit. It has a shit ton of outputs. It's got um, II2S and I'm like, all right, cool. This is, this is great. This is built into this. DLNA finds this and DLNA finds this. It literally showed up on my list. Didn't have to do anything on the computer. And when I hit, you know, next on Marilyn Manson, now playing. Thank you. It just, it just, music is magically happening on my foobar, going out to the Wi Fi, and landing in this $3,000 unit and playing perfectly. Back to settings. Holy fuck. That was, that was literally the Wi-Fi rant. I knew it was going to come. I'm sorry. There's, you got to skip it. If now that there's, now that there's chapter marks on videos, I'm not afraid to just go on and on and on about something because you can see how long the chapter is in the timeline and go, oh, I don't want to hear about this shit. Next, and just go to the end of it, which if I am on the ball and put my chapter marks correctly will be wonderful and beneficial for everybody. Um, back to settings. <laughs> Firmware, load defaults, product info, network, Wi-Fi, we're done talking about. Remote shortcut on and off. Um, I think that's, there's a key on here that doesn't do anything. That's something, actually, let's turn that on here. Off, DSD filter, PCM filter, input channel. You could set it to any of those, but I don't know why you'd need input channel. Let's set it to input channel and see what that does. Oh, you gotta set it to be a direct jump. So I'm gonna set it to streaming. Okay. So now this button here, which we could talk about the remote now, I guess, now that we're on the remote section, this button here will now jump directly to streaming, which is DLNA, which is where I am anyway. But otherwise you'd have to go to the input thing and cycle through them. I love this remote. I love this remote for another unit. I don't love this remote for this unit. Number one, there's no settings button on here. Number two, there's no next track button on here. There's no play pause. There's power, uh, dim the lights, volume up. No, I'm sorry, power, dim the lights, mute, volume up, volume down, input select, um, asynchronous, synchronous switch mode, this customize button, and then the filter setting. That's it. But I'm streaming to this from here. And I know I should be able to, through D DLNA, I should, I think, unless you can correct me, change tracks. Or if I connected, like, there's no Bluetooth, so I can't really use that, but there's USB. But I feel like when you put on Spotify, by the way, which I've, I, I should do, but I don't want to, it will literally show you the album art in this thumb size screen. Just you, when you go to the, the product page, it's all they show you is, oh, look at the thumbnails playing. Are you playing in Rune? So this will connect to Rune instantly. It'll connect to Spotify. It'll just show up on your Wi-Fi network in Spotify. Oh, fine, I will at least look. All my old wallpapers are currently backgrounds, sh sh shuffling. So let's open up my Spotify. I'm not gonna recommend Spotify yet. Let's go to this which is, these are all my fucking things I could play it on. There's the X Saber. I'm now gonna play on the X, let me stop this so that it doesn't, I don't want it to weird it out. Best of Rock 1982, um, play. On the X Saber, Athena now playing, is it? I think I see the, yep, there's the album art. Ugh. Ugh. Yay! Subdivisions by Rush. It's loading it. It's loading it. It's loading it. There it is. Album art's there. It'll probably be the best Spotify has ever sounded. How about that? Because it's just, it's literally sending it from here. But I think this is connected to Wi-Fi. So Spotify is actually talking directly to this, not to my phone. And then this, in fact, if I hit play, 
If I close Spotify, let me see something. This is still playing. So my phone has nothing to do with it. I could turn my phone off and it would still be playing. Now, the only problem with that is, um, that's volume. Matrix, next track. Next track's Matrix. I d I, this needs more buttons. This needs to control this unit, or the fascia needs to have, like, if I hold this down, it is in volume, it becomes next track. So it's, the beauty of this over a, just a DAC, is that it's got this streamer in it. It's got a very good streamer in it. You're saving over, like, a Pi Hat. It's all built in. I don't have to worry about the II-2S, which we're getting to, still getting to it, and how I can't get the II-2S from the Pi Hat to work on this. Even though this has four different configurations you could choose from, and none of them work. I don't know. I don't know. But now that I can stream directly, I don't give a fuck. Because why include another piece of hardware? Well, I mean, look look what's plugged in. Did you even has anyone even noticed? There's just power and outputs. That's it. I haven't had this thing plugged into co I had it plugged into coaxial originally, but then I'm like, now that I know this, I don't need to fucking plug into anything. I can literally just plug this into power and stick it in the middle of my fucking, you know, great room upstairs with nothing around it and plug in a two dollar Bluetooth speaker here and have it just it, it works. The problem is I can't, like, I literally now have no control over it. And I wonder how I get this to work again and not the currently off Spotify on my phone. Let's see if I just put on Neon Demon if... Did it switch? All right, DLNA took over, thank God. But it was just still, play, it was just still playing Rush. Um, so the remote control, love the build, solid aluminum. That silver you see is just the aluminum cut around the rubber and silicon buttons. These are these are actually flat, not raised. I kind of like them when they're raised. Very thin, very just, I love it. They're, your thumb goes right where the volume is supposed to be, although this is, it's great. You can adjust the, the volume. Look at the way it shows you the volume. Hold on. Oh! It's a big, it drains the volume circle. It's not super fast, but it's it's enough and it's a good visual from your far, when you're far away. If you're using this for speakers, like I was, you could see it going up and down, and you can also control that here. It doesn't go any faster. I wish it was a touch, just a little baby bit faster. And I'm gonna keep it at like five and a half decibels down. Um, so there's that. So I think the remote's done. I think the the features on the front of this is done. Let's keep going through the settings. Oh, shit. All right, back again. 14, 13, network. 12, remote. Uh, 11, remote address. You could add another remote. A 10, language, English. 9, auto dimmer, which I have turned off. Otherwise, it'll dim the whole screen. Brightness, high. You can lower the brightness. 7, touch buzzer. If you listen... Not really a buzzer, but that can be disabled if you want. I like it. I like when things beep when I touch them. Um... I do not molest robots. Auto standby is off, because you could always have to just auto standby if nothing's playing, but I'm doing a review, so that has to be off. Jitter eliminator. So now we're into the... Setting number five is when actual audio settings start. Everything else has just been convenience settings. So setting five is jitter eliminator, which is on. Because jitter is the timing errors, which shouldn't actually matter with DLNA, but if you're doing the output, jitter would matter. Four is dither. Um, I'm not even going to fucking attempt to explain dither, because I will do it wrong. I know I'll do it wrong, and people will correct me in the comments. So you know what? Comments. I'm, I'm referring to you now as comments. You are a being of yourself. Please, someone explain jitter. I'll wait here. Back to settings. We're gonna move up now. So dither is, I'm sorry, not jitter, dither. Explain dither. You can explain jitter too. Jitter and dither. That sounds like a, a terrible restaurant. Or one of those ball pit places, jitter and dither. Um, number three, DPLL bandwidth. Another thing I've explained previously, very, very complicated bullshit. If you know what it is, you don't buy this unit if you don't know what DPLL div, uh, DPLL bandwidth is. Don't buy this. I know what it is, because I had to research it, but I ain't fucking explaining it again. And if I tell you, then you'll have a reason to spend $3,000. The number two setting is the type 
of II2S connection. There's type A, B, C, and D. And it gives you a diagram with such small text that I don't think the resolution of the screen is even enough to see it, but it's describing what each of the connections is on the HDMI port. Like it's a, it's a high res screen, but it ain't that fucking high res. And I tried for an hour all those different HDMI cables, which were long enough to reach the unit where it used to live there. And then the one I know works, this little short gray one, plugged into the back of it, just trying, before I knew this had DLNA that could work, because I didn't even try the network at that point. Before I knew that, I, was, I kept reading about how, oh, II2S, you gotta II2S this thing, you have to II2S. It's gonna bypass all the bullshit and it's the best way to go about it. I couldn't get the Pi Hat to work, period. I tried a long, HDMI cable because it's just an HDMI connection. That's what II2S is. And then I tried that blue one, and then I tried that other short or black one that's thick, and then I tried the fucking normal one by yanking out of the fucking position and it couldn't get it to work. A, B, C, D. And here's the thing it showed 40 for one. If I put in high res audio, it showed 96 or 176. It was getting signal and it was recognizing it, but it wasn't outputting. I could never get it to make sound. So I don't know, that's probably just some weird quirk between the Pi Hat and this unit. You don't need the Pi Hat and this unit because this unit's DLNA will just replace the Pi Hat unless you wanna integrate this into a multitude of things. I'm just gonna keep wiping the top. Just, just. How did something get stuck? To, what am I producing out of my face that got stuck to the top of that? That's setting number two is your II2S type. And setting number one, the first setting is line out mode and then it's either adjustable or fixed and that's it. And I have it currently set to adjustable, it's just me adjust the volume. And that's the tour of the fucking saber. The fact that, you, all right, who's buying this? If you want a $3,000 DAC, if you for some reason you have to buy this, fine. Okay, I'll allow it. Because it's so fucking heavy and pretty and well made and everything lines up and the remote looks sexy even though it's lacking features that if you had to blow three grand here's your fuck blow it blow the shit out of it do coke off the top of it but the real reason you buy this is if you are a streaming whore you've got the the lifetime six hundred dollar subscription to rune you I want to just just plug Spotify. People can come to your house and they have their Spotify and their fucking phones, and they go, "Oh, you're connected to my Wi-Fi? Yeah, search for the X Saber, and boom, it's just it's happening. It's happening. I if I, I won't even say if you like MQA because you shouldn't. Get the fuck off my channel. You can hit the unsubscribe button if you are an MQA fanboy or girl or fucking I don't know what's mental patient. Go watch Golden's videos on that. I won't link them, but just search Golden Sound and MQA, or just search MQA on YouTube. How many videos, does his video come up? Tell me in the comments. When you search MQA, just that, on YouTube, does Golden's videos come up? Like first, they should. Um, this is mostly a streaming platform. I've plugged in coaxial, I plugged in fiber optic, it works fine as a DAC, that's just DAC shit. That's just DAC shit. And I said I wasn't gonna review $3,000 DACs. But the fact that I can, without any wires touching this, except for power and output, send my music, which by the way, takes a second, takes a second, takes a second, now it's playing. It's the Pi Hat's faster, but I think, I don't know the reason for that. I, it, but like if I change tracks here, I have the volume down, I have the volume way down. That's mute. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that shit. If you go to change the things with the remote, like if you go to change the input, he on, when you touch it on the front panel, you get stream, you get this beautiful small thing that you can read, right? And then you don't have to hit enter. But when you change it on the remote, this is why that I'm gonna recommend this. Because Matrix has a couple nice things going for them right now. If you go to change the input on the remote, giant fucking logos that you can see. Streaming, coaxial, fiber optic, II2S, USB. Because you wouldn't be able to read that shit if you were touching it on, touching on the front, you could read it. Touching on the remote, you gotta be far away. That's why if you do volume here, it shows you numbers. 
And if you do, if you get out of that, this has to rest. If you do volume here, it's the giant bar that you can see. Th that's just someone thinking about shit at a, in, a, in a building. Hey, why don't we make it so that, oh my God, I miss the rubber lamp and the hemp's. They haven't been used. This is, this combo is fucking amazing. This is just delivering the sound via magic Wi-Fi shit. Like that sort of shit, hitting the mute button has a big mute button on it. Whereas you wait, or and then it goes and it goes dim and then it goes bright. You hit the mute button here, it's just mute. It's just mute. It's that sort of shit is why Matrix is one of my favorite audio brands. They're actually considering it. This is amazing. Amazing user experience on this, except for the fucking password and the fact that this needs a next track play pause, like just more, but make it make your remote the same remote, just 27 inches long. Let me hit all the buttons. Be nice if I could have also, when I was putting in that fucking password, done it here with like an up, down, left, right controller. Something, anything. Plug a keyboard into the back of it. All right, I gotta end this review because I I don't I don't want to like speak negatively about it. I fucking love this thing. As a piece of audio gear, it does its job. From from the very basic standpoint, it does its job. It has thing come into its signal that is a digital signal. Output, sound amazing, great, go. Take this off for a second and swap to... Because I brought them out and I'm using the fucking the cable, so I got it. I just got it. I got it. No, I paused it now. <sighs> how much of this uh, is the $2,200 amp? And how much is the $3,000 DAC? I guarantee you the uh, is mostly coming from the amp and the headphones. Headphones are the most important. I know that because I had this on the IF IFI Go Blue. And these are still amazing, like like the best, like they're just so fucking high. So that's a hundred, that's a two hundred dollar unit versus like a twenty two hundred dollar unit on a three thousand dollar DAC, which is directly Wi Fi playing. Headphones always matter the most. You have to have your headphone game has to be fucking done to consider a three thousand dollar fucking anything. That's upstream. Like once you have the headphone, you can have this headphone playing off the onboard laptop sound card, and you're gonna be like, all right, this is lacking. Next amp okay this is great but i'm still using the onboard sound for my, my digital to analog conversion get a good DAC, a solid DAC, a decent DAC. you would have to have everything sorted before you threw three thousand dollars at it or specifically you're a rune head rune boy rune the, the water boy i'm trying to get people who what is the people who are obsessed with rune because they're in my patronage chat for ten dollars a month um, they're in there, I'm spending six hundred dollars lifetime to get rune, and I refuse because I can't make it transparent and put my waifus in the background. See, because I, 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 Fubar, I, I, I can, and until you do that rune, I ain't spending a fucking penny. Jesus Christ, this sounds good. Ananda, Ananda on this is not even in tube mode. This is one of the finest pieces of audio equipment I've ever touched. Just physically, physically touched. The, the interface, the way it, it uh, 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 all right? That's the best I could describe it. If you look at the actual, like, pictures of the internals, the reason it's so heavy is because the entire power section has fucking walls between it and this, and this is in its own section for the output so that there's no interference between the, the thing. They've gone above and beyond in the build, the interface is fucking stellar, except for those few quirks that I want to punch it in the face. It's It sounds $3,000, I guess. It's as close as you're going to get for me to endorsing a $3,000 DAC for its sound. But the feature set, the fact that it shows up, the fact that I don't need a streaming thing, that it'll stream from Rune, it'll stream from Spotify, it'll stream from DLNA off my fucking FUBAR, the fact that I can do that without any problems, it just was there. And here it is. That's, that makes it, it eliminates the fucking issues that, you know, the, the, the hard issues. If you could set it up, if you could just put in your, your Wi-Fi password, 
that's it, you're done. Check for a firmware update and update my firmware and okay. That was it, three, three presses. Never once did it like, did it crash or not turn on. It, it worked flawlessly. It should work flawlessly for three grand. And I, I, the only problem I have other than that is you can't put anything on top of it because A, it's too fucking pretty. B, it's glass and you can't cover the Wi-Fi antenna, but, but it's also a million pounds. So you kind of don't want to put it on top of something because it's a million pounds. But then if you put anything on it, it's like, well, you're going to smudge the... I can't put my headphones on that. Like, the, the, the grease from my head will just get... No. No. No, absolutely not. Un, unacceptable. I love it. It's three grand. If you want any of the features I talked about, consider it. If you want it for just being a DAC, I'll, I like Matrix enough to say, uh, I'll give it a pass. But I think you'd probably be fine with it. Like, I'm pretty sure the, the amount of... of orgasm I'm happening with the Anandas and the IFI ICANN signature would be 99.8% if I used a $500 DAC to feed that instead. Just saying. Um, but then I would also need the Pi Hat to stream to it. I'm done. Thank you, Apos, for sending the Matrix audio X hyphen saber of red three DAC slash streamer. It can't just be a DAC, it has to be a streamer. I won't do expensive DAX. No, 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 no. Um, but this was actually fun. I actually enjoyed this. Unlike some DAX that are just big honking expensive fucking things that I can't prove sound better. This at least had features. I was able to dick around with it. I was able to get angry. A good review has to have me angry for at least a part of it. And if something's perfect, then I don't, I don't like it. But this is imperfect. But it's so good, I'm like, just fuck it. I want that on. I would love to see that. Here's the thing. At $3,000, it sounds expensive. I'm going to the Capital Audio Fest, which is November 5th through the 7th um, in next to DC. I'm going there. And I guarantee you, there will not be a single DAC in use in any of the expensive speaker rooms that is less than $8,000. This would be the bargain bin basement DAC. And you know what? I bet you this sounds as good or better and has DLNA and they would just put the laptop in the back on the Wi-Fi. It'd be fucking great. You won't see a single Matrix Audio DAC at that fucking show. My room would have it because you know what? Looks sexy. Especially when you shut off the... the mm -mm. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Wallpaper. Took me a while. I wasn't going to... I was like, am I going to do this review now? Let me see if I can find the wallpaper. And I went through like 100 wallpapers before I found that one. I'm like, you know what? Something about this is just so right and yet so wrong. And that's this. Um, so you can download that in the description. Uh, Patreon and subscribe star. Um, support this channel and its insanity. If you'd like to see reviews like this early, <coughs> oh God, I'm dying. Participate in the yard sales or hear uncompressed modern sound demos and all the missing sound demos. $5 a month lets you do that. $10 a month puts you in the behind the scenes private telegram chat where people have known I've had this shit for a while. They know I've got to just shill the shit out of most of it for a while. And you get to ask me any questions you want because I can't answer them on every platform. But if you want to ask me questions directly, you got to jump the little baby paywall of $10. And then once you're in there though, you get to hang out with all the other people who are absolutely insane and like audio a little bit too much. And you get into a private swap meet channel that is just for the $10 patrons, uh, previous and current. If you've ever wanted to sell your gear or buy gear from people who at least have made it past that paywall, it's great because it's kind of like a trustworthy little environment. Don't come there and fuck it around with it. Um, but yeah, so you get into the swap meet channel, you get a $10 chat. And if you support long enough, you get into the lifetime chat and there's a Discord and a, and a Telegram. There's uh, media links. There's a social media links that has my Instagram, my Twitter, all that other shit buried down there. The public Discord, the public Telegram. Um, there's an IRC. I don't think I linked the IRC anymore. Are you still in the... Anyone still in the IRC? Hi, how are you doing? Why are you there? The, the internet relay chat is, is not... Although internet relay chat might become like the last bastion of free speech eventually. But right now it's like, eh. Anyway, wallpapers, this, links to headphones. I didn't even I didn't even fucking get the Poseidons hooked up. I didn't even Poseidon, but I was too busy. But um thank you for stopping by. Um I'm calling this video at 53 minutes. Maybe it's shorter than that. Maybe it's like 43 minutes. I'm gonna say 53 minutes because I felt like I rant, ranted a lot. Um Yeah, and we're done. And I'll see you in two days. And don't forget to check out the 
uh, other channel too, the Sound Demo channel, the Unboxing channel, where I unboxed this and went, oh my fucking god. And then um, this cooking channel, if you find that, Z Cooks Consortium. And that's it. And uh, what else? Chewbacca. Do you picture Chewbacca? I will ask her with her in curious eyes. I think that's it. I think that's it. Is that it? I think that's it. Anyway, see you at Capital Audio Fest whenever in 2021, baby.